Good afternoon. And what a wonderful afternoon it is at the University of Akron. Thank you for being here. It's a momentous occasion. And it's my pleasure to introduce the chairman of our board of trustees, Mr. Dick Pogue. Mr. Pogue. Thank you. Good afternoon. Terrific crowd here today. Again, this year, as it was the same case last year, it's my honor and real privilege to introduce our president, Dr. Luis Proenza, for his State of the University address. Last year, <clears throat> on this same occasion, I noted that Luis would, at that time, beginning, be beginning his 15th year of leading our university. And today, as he's nearing the last semester of his presidency, I would say that he is even more fervent than ever before about the university's immense importance to this, to so many people and its continuing great potential for doing <coughs> a lot of good in this, uh, in the uh, area served by the university. From the first day that he arrived on the campus here, Luis has presented himself as an agent of change and he's continually lived up to that proposition over the entire period of these 15 years to the benefit of all of us. And so it shouldn't be <clears throat> a surprise that once he decided to make a personal change, he promptly embraced it. So just as we have all joined in his vision of institutional change up to now, we can now support his personal transition to a new role with great respect and gratitude and interest in his a promise for the future. We are all grateful for the many major accomplishments that we've made together under his strong leadership. This institution is <clears throat> vastly improved over the condition that it was in when he arrived, as many of you know uh, very well. We can be very grateful to him for his outreach beyond the boundaries of the university per se, to the city, to the county, to Northeast Ohio, to various organizations throughout the country in academia and in the fields of innovation, economic development, and public-private partnerships. We can also be grateful for his continued dedication and guidance through this current academic year where he's continuing his leadership in strong fashion. And as Northeast Ohioans, we can certainly be grateful that he'll be returning here after his post uh, presidential sabbatical rather than, as someone else has said, take his talents to South Beach <laughs> or elsewhere. <laughs> What's more, I know that Luis is very pleased to look ahead and be remaining as part of this great institution. His term as president has extended well, well beyond the average uh, tenure of a university president in the United States. Indeed, these 15 years are a little more than twice the average length of a presidency in uh, <clears throat> academia today. His impressive service here in both length and quality is a fine testament to him, but it also reflects the strong qualities and admirable vibrancy that we sense here on the campus on the part of the students, our wonderful faculty, the support staff, <clears throat> the alumni groups, friends, community members, and many others who comprise all together the University of Akron. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the citizens of Ohio for whom we <coughs> represent, I want to thank each of you who falls into one of the various categories I just mentioned for demonstrating your ardent dedication to this wonderful institution and especially to our students and to the mission of the University of Akron. So we thank Luis for exemplifying that devotion, sharing it with us and the rest of the world for the past decade and a half. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the president of the University of Akron, Dr. Luis M. Proenzo. Luis. Thank you, Mr. Pogue. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, not only do I thank you for those kind words, uh, but uh, we all thank you for your ongoing tireless leadership at Northeast Ohio and, and elsewhere. 
Now, I have to tell you, uh, uh, his mentioning of South Beach uh, wasn't at all mentioned while we were discussing my transition, so maybe we can reopen that, uh, Dick. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, joining us uh, this afternoon. I extend a most uh, cordial and warm greeting to all of you who have gathered uh, today, our faculty, our staff, our students, alumni, friends of the university. Allow me to take just a moment to introduce the members of our Board of Trustees who are with us uh, today. First, you've already met, but certainly Mr. Richard Pogue, Dick, uh, our Vice Chairman, Mr. Pavlov, uh, and uh, uh, two of our uh, recently appointed trustees, Mrs. Olivia P. DeMoss and Mrs. Jennifer Blickle. Welcome, colleagues. <laughs> now, I truly wish uh, that uh, I had the time uh, uh, and indeed uh, uh, the uh, the courage to try to introduce uh, so many others who are so very important to the university, but I would be sure to leave someone out, and so I want to extend a cordial and most grateful greeting on behalf of the university to all of our community leaders, uh, government representatives, uh, elected officials, friends of the university, uh, for their service not only to the university, but to the city and the state. And so I ask everyone to please join me in greeting uh, those uh, colleagues who have come here today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And so it is that today I deliver my 15th and last State of the University address. And thank you for not bursting out into wild applause for the word last. We are the university in, of, and for Akron. You are the University of Akron. And I know that I will have many other opportunities to thank you, but I want to begin and end my remarks today by thanking all of you for what it is that you do, what it is that you have done, and what it is that you will yet do to make the university even more successful. Thank you. And so as the process for selecting my successor continues, I want to make it clear that this institution shall remain productive and energetic during the transition to a new leader. In fact, it should be obvious to all that challenges old and new now press upon us the need for continued action with a clear focus on the goals established in our Vision 2020 strategic plan. And the past 15 years have witnessed perhaps the most substantive and dramatic transformation of this university since its founding in 1870 and even since its becoming a state university. Our collective efforts have achieved far more than even we could have imagined when we began. And yet as we approach the university's 150th anniversary, we have new opportunities ahead and indeed the responsibility to continue our upward momentum. In 1999, when I arrived, we were concerned with declining state funding for higher education. Little did we know that such funding levels would come to be known as the good old days. In fact, state spending on higher education in 2012 was $2.33 billion, almost the exact same amount spent in 1999. In case you're wondering, had state spending at least kept pace with inflation over these past 15 years, current annual funding would be about $3.2 billion, and that means about 30% more than it was then. Instead, Ohio now ranks 46th among all 50 states in its per FTE support of higher education. Enrollment then was a top priority, as it is now, but the picture in 1999 was truly daunting. Enrollment was flat for the third year in a row after having fallen dramatically during the previous decade. Shared governance was much on the minds of many, and an unprecedented number of retirements and other personnel actions had winnowed the ranks of our community. However, there are very significant differences between the University of Akron then and now. Let me share some of them with you. In 1999, our connections to the community were largely at the individual or departmental level. Today, we are recognized as a regional catalyst for creating collaborative public-private partnerships. Publications ranging from the New York Times to the Akron Beacon Journal cite our importance to the vitality and health of the city. And as you leave here this afternoon, I hope you can pick up a copy of the new 2014-2013 report to the committee, which focuses very much on the university's role within 
Akron and Northeast Ohio. And the title, as you can see here, is University to signify that very special relationship to our city. And 15 years ago, it was rare to find positive mention of our university in major media or at national policy meetings. That wasn't for the lack of material. There was ample evidence of excellence on this campus. Sometimes it seemed we were unaware of this excellence, and at other times, we just simply didn't talk about it. Now, perhaps uh, it is that we had succumbed to that famed Midwestern malady towards ostentation modesty, which good humorous Garrison Keillor once characterized in this manner. He said, if you give us a gold trophy, we will have it bronze, just so you won't think that we think we're special. <laughs> and finally, recall what our campus looked like in 1999. Traffic literally quadrisected our community north to south and west to east. Deferred maintenance had left many buildings in need of major renovation or replacement, but it was clear in 1999 that this university community was ready and eager to advance. And among our first goals, led by our Board of Trustees, were to gain recognition as a Carnegie Teaching Academy and as a Research II University, something that we accomplished in short order indeed. And over the past 15 years, we have acted thoughtfully and boldly, purposely and aggressively, individually and collectively to enhance our relevance, connectivity, and productivity, the three guiding principles that now define the Akron model. A few key initiatives will illustrate some of what we have accomplished, but I literally will just list them. The New Landscape for Learning Campus Enhancement Program, the University of Akron Research Foundation, the Austin Bioinnovation Institute in Akron, the University Park Alliance, the STEM Middle School and the STEM High Schools, our industrial collaborations, including the National Center for Education Research on Corrosion and Materials Performance, the Timken Engineered Surfaces Laboratory, which is an unprecedented and defining partnership that is so widely recognized now, the National Additive Manufacturing Innovation Institute, among many others, our Vision 2020 Strategic Plan, which includes our progress on academic program review and achieving distinction programs, the Akron Experience Initiative, including the Successful U Application, app as we call it, and a comprehensive focus on student success, the Pathways to Student Academic Success Program, the creation of the University Council, the Integrator assessor model of online learning, which is now being explored by, among others, the Association of Public and Land-Grant Universities, as well as other partners. We have undertaken and done much over the past decade and a half, so a reasonable question that you may well ask is, what has been the return on this investment? Well, in 1999-2000, our enrollment was less than 23,000, and by 2011, it had soared to nearly 30,000. Yes. A number of variables, including demographic drop in the number of college-age students, mounting economic pressures on students and their families, and our positive actions under the Pathways to Student Academic Success brought that total down to just over 27,000. But fall 2013 enrollment remained more than 17% higher than in 1999, and initial indicators give us reason for even more optimism. Applications for next fall are up by about uh, a significant amount, and nearly 2,000 prospective students and their parents attending, attended our fall visit day last Saturday. Notably, notably, our total degree production has soared by 35% over the past 15 years to 5,083 in 2012 13, up from 3,766. I better say that again. Up from 3,766 in the 98 99 year. Last year, we graduated 6% more students than in the previous year, with a 12% increase in STEM graduates over that same period of time. And this year's freshman class has the highest incoming GPA that we've seen in 20 years. Now let me highlight some of the other things that has changed. Fundraising actually may be one of the least celebrated major success stories of our university. Keep in mind that every donation, every gift, and I see so many in the audience who do that every day, every gift is an affirmation of the giver's belief in our institution and its mission and vision. And there is, apropos of yesterday, an old political maxim that the most sincere vote that a person can make is with their wallet. And by that measure, I am pleased to tell you that voting for the University of Akron, for your university, 
has been very, very strong indeed. The past 15 years constitute the most successful fundraising period in this institution's 143 year history. In 1998, annual giving totaled just over 15 million, but by 2012, we had more than tripled that amount with private donations along bringing in nearly $53 million annually. In 2007, we had launched the comprehensive campaign, Aspire, Attain, Advance, with the goal of raising 500 million by 2012. Well, we raised more than 600 million by 2009, and soon we will reach the $1 billion mark. Now, one of the many factors that has contributed to our success, of course, is the literal transformation of our physical campus. Prior to the start of our campus enhancement program, our enrollment was suffering. And it wasn't hard, ladies and gentlemen, to see why. With traffic slicing through the campus, worn buildings serving as classrooms, few student facilities, and sidewalks and parking lots dominating our landscape, we made a less than good impression upon prospective students and odd donors. But since 2000, we have added 22 new buildings, made additions or renovations to 18 other structures, added 34 acres of new green space, planted more than 30,000 trees and bushes, and created countless plazas, walkways, terraces, all making ours perhaps the most beautiful metropolitan sided campus in the country. Just yesterday, a visitor to campus that hadn't seen it in 20 years said essentially those same words. The investment has been large, but so too has been the return. And this investment will continue to produce returns, both tangible and intangible, returns like the pride of our students, faculty, and staff when bringing visitors to campus, returns like the sea change in the community's perception of our university, returns like the effect this attractive environment has on our own productivity, our own engagement, and our own happiness in being part of this institution. Indeed, in some ways, this new landscape for learning is yet too new for us to fully appreciate its effects. Compare, for example, our E.J. Thomas Performing Arts Hall, which on its 40th anniversary last week was hailed as a flagship performance venue and as a powerful economic asset for downtown Akron. And so too, in the coming years, we will see our university further validate the investment in the new landscape for learning. Our university has grown not only in physical size and reputation, but also in its presence beyond Summit County. In 99, Wayne College in Orville was our only physical location outside of Akron. Today, we have facilities in Medina, Brunswick, and Lakewood. In addition, our distance learning classrooms are linked to 13 area high schools, a number of other universities and colleges, and other notable institutions across Ohio. And through these facilities, we have hosted events in international capitals such as Berlin, Moscow, Tokyo, Tokyo, Beijing, and Buenos Aires, among others. Our research enterprise has more than doubled and now stands at approximately $60 million. And our productivity in this regard is nothing short of phenomenal. On average, we disclose more than 70 new inventions annually, and we have been ranked number one in the world in patents per research dollar, and number one in Ohio in licensing revenue among public universities, and number seven in the United States in total licensing revenue for universities without a medical school, again, in terms of per unit of research input. The University of Akron Research Foundation, created in 2001, is a success by any measure boasting more than 50 spin-off companies, participation in five joint ventures with major corporations, and nearly $500 million of follow-on funding in companies that were selected to present to its 550 Archangel Investor Network. UARF, as we refer to the Research Foundation, manages 286 patents, 430 patents worldwide, and is engaged in 115 industry-sponsored research agreements. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, our faculty has accrued a significant record of research achievement. And thanks to their excellent work, our statement that the University of Akron is the public research university for Northeast Ohio is not just a claim or a boast. It is simply a fact. In 1999, I often remarked about the under-celebrated and even undiscovered excellence of this university. And our situation is considerably different today. 
Our faculty, staff, and students have consistently earned increasing national and international acclaim for their achievements in teaching and learning, research, service, co-curricular activities, including athletics, and so much more. And you know some of the statistics that I like to brag about, statistics provided to us by others. Indeed, the university as a whole has become recognized more broadly on the national stage and even at the global level. Just last week, for example, we were prominently mentioned at three national meetings, one right after the other. And institutionally and individually, we have become passionate about telling our story, each successive story contributing to the growth of our institutional reputation, each factually based. Now, although returns on investment are most often measured in dollars and cents, they also come in many other forms that bring external validation that we are among the best in class. And while I have barely scratched the surface in outlining the returns on our investment over the past 15 years, it should be evident that we have come a tremendously long way together over the past one and a half decades. Indeed, the state of the University of Akron in 2013 is strong. Wait, not finished, <laughs> but thank you. Getting there. So the path behind us shows our progress, and while we have earned the right to celebrate, we now must look to the path before us with a, ter with a determination to build on the momentum we've created. And thus, to go forward, we must first strengthen the financial basis of our university. And we must do so by serving students in ways that generate full enrollment, retention, and completion strategies for all of them. We must do so by increasingly serving as an engine for economic development for our region. We must do so by furthering our foundational principles of relevance, connectivity, and productivity. And to do so, we must adapt to our changing environment, because for many years, I've shared with you Chuck Vest's famous phrase that seismic rumbles of change were transforming traditional paradigms for research in higher education. Now, we all can appreciate the dramatic changes that technology has brought to the educational landscape just in the course of our own careers. I certainly look back to when I started, and personal computer, computers weren't even on the horizon. PDAs were mainly things that we couldn't have imagined then. And since then, we are all witnesses to the kind of disruptive innovation that Clayton Christensen of Harvard Business School and Anya Kamenetz, author of DIYU, discussed in a series that appeared in the Education Life section of the New York Times just this past Sunday. So it is imperative that we all act to align our institution with these new realities. Just a few weeks ago, our Board of Trustees approved a revised balanced budget. The actions we took to balance the budget underscore the direct and indirect effects that recruitment, retention, and degree completion have on every employee of this institution. Indeed, with state funding for higher education at historic lows, tuition revenue generated by enrollment becomes one of paramount importance. Now, some of you may not like to hear it, but reality presses upon us the simple economic truth of any enterprise that a dollar not brought in is a dollar that cannot be paid out. Thus, our highest priority in 2013 is improving student recruitment, student retention, and student progress to degree completion so they can have a more effective and efficient path to their own success. These challenges are not new, nor should we think them daunting. We encountered en enrollment decreases in 2000 and again in 2003, 2004, but both times we emerged stronger and more vibrant, and I'm confident that we shall do so again. So next week, we will hold a two-day U University of Akron Summit on retention, subtitled Building an Action Plan from Persistence to Completion. And as a reflection of our shared leadership, this event is sponsored by the University Council, Faculty Senate, the Diversity Council, and undergraduate student government all together. We have scheduled a full two days because every faculty and staff member is invited and encouraged to participate in at least some portion of this summit program. Nationally recognized scholar Dr. Vincent Tinto 
will present his research findings and best practices, but the success of this effort will hinge on two things, our collective participation in the creation of an action plan on retention and our follow through on that plan. If you've not yet signed up on the website, I urge you to do so right after this event. Do, so, do it soon. Keep in mind now that furthering the principles of relevance, connectivity, and productivity requires selective and thoughtful attention to new initiatives, such as the Summit on Retention, as well as to what we are doing that is no longer adding value. And so in this regard, I believe it is important to revisit with some urgency and purpose the suggestions I put forth four years ago in my letter of October 28, 2009 to the campus community when I challenged us to consider how we may better align and organize ourselves, our university, for success. We held discussions as to how we could remove organizational impediments and best optimize our ability to execute on emerging goals, the return on that investment of time and energy was indeed significant. The successful convergence of the Bookdale College of Arts and Sciences with the College of Creative and Professional Sci Arts as well as the creation of a new college of health professions with its focus on an interprofessional approach to care that better prepares students for that professional world. But I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that is not enough. Therefore, when I address the Faculty Senate tomorrow, I will make the following recommendation, which will require, and I will ask for the Senate's prompt action so that I can bring it before our Board of Trustees at their April meeting with the goal of having it in place prior to the arrival of my successor. To put it simply, we must work together to encourage and reward interdisciplinary research and teaching and to remove structural barriers to that goal. Therefore, I will call for a creation of a series of interdisciplinary institutes or centers based on our strengths, opportunities in the marketplace, and challenges that now hinder economic development in Northeast Ohio. These centers and institutes will be focused on those areas of emphasis identified in Vision 2020, regional solutions, innovative technologies, medicine and health, and the human condition. Now, we already have taken the first steps in creating some of these. There are two interdisciplinary projects funded through the Achieving Distinction Initiative, one involving biomimicry research and another related to proof of concept, intellectual property, and entrepreneurship. But think also of our National Center of Education and Research on Corrosion and Materials Performance and the Center for Biostatistics and Health. Of course, we should explore other possibilities. For example, we could enhance our focus on biomaterials to better facilitate existing collabor collaborations across colleges, as well as with organizations such as ABIA and biomedical entities throughout the region and nation. Another possibility might be a focus on teaching and learning innovations in urban settings with an emphasis on talent supply chain management approaches to improving the educational and workforce attainment of our region. This could include extending our collaborations with organizations such as Summit Education Initiative, United Way, social services agencies, as well as our emerging regional innovation institute. But regardless of the interdisciplinary areas we choose to fund in the next round of the Achieving Distinction Program, all would promote the development of joint proposals, shared graduate students, and publications across participating colleges. Moreover, to better develop this interdisciplinary environment, I will work with the provost and deans to ensure that faculty hires create clusters of expertise related to these and related areas. Now, of course, individual disciplinary expertise, which is at the core of interdisciplinary collaborations, will continue to be valued. But to further facilitate and foster interdisciplinary opportunities, I also will ask the university community as a whole to address three other equally important issues. First, we must assure a successful and innovative outcome of our academic program review process. These recommendations already have been made and shared and include proposals for areas of disinvestment as well as areas of new investment opportunities from those savings. We now must move to implement them. Second, as I did in 2009, I will ask that we again revisit the organization of our schools and colleges precisely to ensure the interdisciplinary success being sought by so many of our faculty, sometimes to great frustration. 
Third, and finally, I will ask that we implement the proposed revision of our general education curriculum, including the reduction to 120 credit hours to graduate with a baccalaureate, that, and that this be accomplished, uh, excuse me, that this be accompanied by the assessment of learning outcomes in a rigorous manner. It is vital that we have a seamless first two years that can be applied towards almost any degree, that we maintain the high completion rates of students admitted directly into majors and colleges, that we assist, assess student learning, and that we facilitate the movement of students from pre-major status to major status. I also ask that general education courses be offered not just during the day, and certainly not just between 10 and 2, but also online and in the evenings and on weekends because we must, we have to accommodate the non-traditional schedules of so many of our students and provide them the ability to progress efficiently toward a degree. A little more than a century ago in 1862, under conditions so desperate they make our challenges seem minor and inconsequential by comparison, Abraham Lincoln said in his message to Congress, and I quote, as our case is new, so we must think anew and act anew. We must disenthrall ourselves, he said. And I think Lincoln's words have particular value for us as we take our university forward. We too must think anew to meet the challenges and needs of these times. We too must act anew to leverage the strength of our collective talent and creativity as we find new answers and answer new opportunities. We too must disenthrall ourselves from misperceptions or apprehensions that hinder our ability to think and act with boldness and confidence. In recent months, even more returns on our investments have filtered through the noise and clatter of daily life and great, great good news. There are many that have been noted and many that we will celebrate in other forms. For now, let me just close with highlighting just one, namely that the University of Akron offers students the best return on their investment among all public universities in Northeast Ohio. So yes, we have come a long way, and whereas the University of Akron once was an institution of undiscovered excellence, we now recognize it as a university of growing and undisputed excellence. You, the students, faculty, staff, alumni, friends, you are the University of Akron, you possess that undisputed excellence that will carry us into the future. I thank you for all of your efforts, your accomplishments, and your support. Indeed, a grateful university salutes you. And so let us all be cheerful and plunge ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Sets. We appreciate it. <laughs> Teresa Perenza, would you come up, please, for a moment? <laughs> Our student ambassador, Teal Howell, has a slight token of appreciation for everything you've done for the university and your leadership. On behalf of the University of Akron, including students like myself, we would all like to thank you for your love and support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I think that completes our proceedings. And thank you again, Dr. Pansy.